Airbus is preparing for an unprecedented conquest of the skies. Rumor has it that it is developing a longer A350, a groundbreaking behemoth that could even surpass the Boeing 777X. Since its debut with Qatar Airways in 2015, the aircraft has redefined long-haul travel lighter, smoother, and more efficient than ever. But Airbus isn't done yet. With talk of the A350-2000 growing, the aviation world could be on the brink of another revolution. So why is Airbus breaking new ground now? And how will it build on the jet's legacy? Let's find out. The Airbus A350-2000 is being developed as a stretched version of the A350-1000 to meet the growing industry demand for a long-haul jet with high capacity and ultra-high performance. With airlines demanding greater range and seating capacity, while also reducing emissions, Airbus sees the A350-2000 as its answer to Boeing's struggling 777X program. Airbus initially shelved plans for the smaller A350-800, instead focusing on two main variants, the A350-900 and A350-1000. But as global travel recovered and airlines phased out giant four-engine aircraft, like the A380 and 747, the need for a next-generation twinjet with similar capacity and superior performance became clear. This new variant is Airbus's answer, a strategically stretched version designed to carry between 400 and 410 passengers in a conventional three-class layout compared to the A350-1000's 369. The increase comes from adding fuselage stoppers both forward and aft of the wings, giving the aircraft a length of around 79 to 80 meters, making it one of the longest passenger aircraft ever built. In addition to handle the increased size and weight, Airbus engineers plan to incorporate a reinforced landing gear, a reinforced mid-body and structural reinforcements to support a maximum takeoff weight, or MTOW for short, that could exceed 322 tons. The aircraft will also have additional Type C emergency exits required to meet evacuation regulations when passenger numbers increase. Internally, the aircraft will likely be fitted with upgraded Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines, which can deliver 105,000 pounds of thrust, providing both the additional power and improved fuel burn needed for the stretched airframe. In addition, aerodynamic improvements such as optimized wing twist, improved flap designs, and advanced materials to reduce weight are being explored to improve performance further. Combined with the A350's proven carbon fiber composite fuselage and wing structure, these upgrades could make the new Super Jumbo 10 to 15% more fuel efficient per seat than its competitors. Strategically, with the 777X facing repeated certification delays and shifting airline interest, Airbus is seizing the opportunity to attract airlines looking for modern replacements for their aging wide bodies without having to wait years for Boeing's next move. The A350-2000 could be the perfect bridge aircraft for airlines with the same capacity as an A380 or 747, but with the cost savings of a twin-engine design, making it an ideal workhorse for routes like London to Singapore, Dubai to Los Angeles, or Hong Kong to New York. By combining greater passenger capacity longer range and world-class performance in one design, Airbus aims to create what industry experts call a multi-role widebody, flexible enough to meet the future needs of global airlines. More than just a long-haul aircraft, it represents Airbus's bold move to redefine long-haul travel, challenging Boeing's dominance, and setting a new standard for efficiency capability and performance in the next era of aviation. Don't miss the next big jet story. Like, subscribe and ring the bell for the next update. The Airbus A350-2000 is designed to be highly compatible with the existing Airbus fleet, offering significant operational and economic advantages. The key benefit is fleet commonality airlines operating the A350-900 or A350-1000 can easily integrate the airplane variant without retraining or recertification of pilots' maintenance systems or spare parts inventories. Operationally, 
This commonality streamlines maintenance and spare parts, management reducing costs, and simplifying logistics. A common cockpit layout across the entire Airbus widebody family, including the A330 and A350, allows pilots to switch between models with minimal additional training often in just a few days. Engineers benefit from cross-training programs, reducing labor costs, and increasing productivity. The maintenance system is also quite synchronized, reducing maintenance costs by 25 to 40 percent compared to older aircraft and increasing aircraft availability. Economically producing a single stretched version of the A350 makes use of existing production capacity, avoiding the complexities and costs associated with developing an entirely new aircraft. By extending the fuselage, adding new structural stops and emergency exits, the A350-2000 can offer greater capacity, making it a more flexible, high-capacity option that is attractive as airlines look to replace aging jumbo jets like the A380 or expand into the ultra-long-haul market. Strategically, it provides Airbus with a strong response to the development of Boeing's 777X family. While the timing may not be urgent, Airbus sees having a larger, more capable aircraft in the pipeline as helping it remain competitive, especially as the 777X program has yet to be certified. The close integration with Airbus's existing technology and production facilities makes it not only a potential game changer in terms of capacity and efficiency, but also a smart move to strengthen Airbus's market position without overstretching its production capacity. In essence, the Airbus A350-2000 represents a highly strategic, operationally seamless, and cost-effective evolution of Airbus's wide-body family. Designed to meet industry demand for larger, more efficient long-haul aircraft while maintaining fleet simplicity and strengthening Airbus's competitive advantage. So when will this giant take off? Airbus has yet to officially launch the A350-2000, but it's clearly gaining momentum. Seen as a natural evolution of the A350-1000 and a direct competitor to the Boeing 777X, the project is getting closer to reality. CEO Guillaume Faure said in mid-2025 that Airbus was monitoring demand and production capacity before making a decision. The design builds on years of A350 development, meaning there's no need to start from scratch. Just incremental upgrades like higher takeoff weight and improved performance. If airline interest grows particularly from the Middle East and Asia Pacific, the A350-2000 could enter service in the late 2020s or early 2030s. The Airbus A350-2000 project faced a number of significant challenges that led Airbus to delay the development of the variant. One of the biggest concerns was the potential for self-destruction of the Airbus A380, which was still in production in the mid-2010s. At the time, Airbus was keen to push airlines to buy the A380 to maintain production as the Super Jumbo failed to meet initial sales expectations, but remained Airbus's flagship product in terms of its Super Jumbo capacity. The introduction of this new stretched variant, which offered around 400 seats in a more efficient twin jet configuration, was feared to reduce demand for the A380 putting real pressure on its viability. Airbus never intended to replace or phase out the four-engine Super Jumbo, but market realities suggested it might. Alongside these strategic considerations, practical issues such as the need for structural reinforcement redesign to handle the increased weight and size and the significant concentration of engineering and manufacturing resources also pose significant barriers. Airbus is prioritizing upgrades to existing A350 variants which are still well-established in the market, as well as pursuing other innovations such as an ultra-long-range ULR version tailored to the specific needs of airlines such as Singapore Airlines. Ultimately, Airbus decided to put the project on hold to prioritize completing the existing Super Jumbo program and consolidating the current A350 family. Since A380 production ended in the late 2010s, the aviation landscape has changed, forcing airlines to look for replacements for the Super Jumbo. Currently, the
the only large capacity options left are the A350-1000 and the Boeing 777X, both twin jets, to fill the gap left by the A380. Fears of competing with itself have eased since the A380 ceased production, but Airbus has chosen to proceed cautiously with this new project, balancing development costs, production capacity, and changing market demands. This cautious approach reflects Airbus's strategic philosophy of avoiding internal competition between aircraft while optimizing resources for projects that offer clear market benefits. The project for this new variant remains a potential idea, but the focus may shift to incremental improvements to existing A350 variants or other new programs in the pipeline. In short, Strategic market positioning and resource allocation throughout the A380 production life cycle, along with technical challenges, have led to the suspension of this future project. However, changing market conditions and the end of the Super Jumbo era may open up new avenues for Airbus to relaunch this high-capacity widebody in the future. Ultimately, Airbus made the strategic decision to cancel the A350-2000 project after years of internal research and market forecasting. While the idea of a longer A350 that could challenge the Boeing 777X sounded promising, it was completely out of step with Airbus's changing priorities. Airlines were moving to aircraft that offered greater route flexibility and fuel efficiency, and the current A350-900 and A350-1000 met those needs without the added complexity of a longer variant. Developing the variant would have required extensive engineering, structural reinforcement, and costly certification, so Airbus chose instead to focus its resources on more profitable projects, like the A321XLR, the A350F freighter, and the ultra-long-range upgrade for the A350-1000. These programs better met the changing needs of global airlines and strengthened Airbus's position in multiple market segments. By the late 2010s, it was clear that the A350 family was strong enough to complement Airbus's wide-body portfolio without creating unnecessary overlap. While the A350-2000 remained an exciting what-if Airbus shifted its focus to next-generation technologies, hydrogen engines, advanced materials, and sustainable design that would shape the company's future, rather than expanding its existing aircraft range. If you were in Airbus's shoes, would you build the A350-2000 or focus on the A321XLR and freighter versions? Leave a comment below. Have a safe and enjoyable flight. Thanks, goodbye, and see you again.